According to the latest reports, former Red Star manager uh, Vladimir Milojevic is set to take over AK Athens of Greece. Uh, Milojevic recently left um, Al Akhli in Saudi Arabia, where he didn't exactly have um, uh, great results. I would say I think I think the expectations were a little bit bigger. 1.39 points per match uh, in 41 matches. He was at Red Star for 149 matches, and it was 2.3. Uh, two points per match. So kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, Milojevic made his name at uh, Trukadicki, which is a club in, in Serbia. Uh, he won a cup there, beating uh, Partizan Belgrade in the finals. I think it was 1-0 or 2-1. I can't remember right now. Uh, but he did win that cup. And that's kind of when he emerged on the scene. Uh, his style of play at that time was very offensive. It wasn't the biggest club in Belgrade by any stretch of the imagination with Red Star and, and Partizan and, and some other clubs there. But now, you know, they're uh, constantly f finishing third, fourth in the league. Uh, they have a great, great youth system. And like I said, that was when he kind of broke onto the scene. Uh, he went to uh, Omonia and he went to uh, another club in Greece. I can't remember the name right now. And then he took over Red Star Belgrade. So it's very interesting that Red, when Red Star was looking for a manager at that time, uh, there were three candidates. I can't remember right now who they were. I think it was uh, Ivan Jovanovic, who was at Apoel, uh, Nicosia, uh, a number of years back when they made it to the, I think it was round of 16 in Champions League when they lost to Real Madrid. And it was another two candidates. And I thought it was weird that uh, Milovic wasn't on the list because of what he had done with Chukaricki. He's a former Red Star player and he was doing very well in Greece at that time. So I thought it was kind of weird that he wasn't on the list or on the short list of three managers who were going to take over. But the following day, he actually uh, became the top um, candidate to, to take over Red Star and he got the job and the results were great. Europa League, two Champions League berths, beating uh, some really good teams in qualifying. You think of Young Boys, you think of uh, Copenhagen, you think of Krasnodar, uh, very close to beating CSK Moscow in the knockout stages of Europa League. He got a very important and big win over Liverpool the year that Liverpool won the Champions League. He drew Napoli. So he has uh, a great track record in terms of what he did for Red Star. The fans absolutely love them here. Uh, so getting into kind of like Milo, what Milojevic is about, he is very discipline oriented, if I can say coach. He likes the 4-2-3-1. He occasionally plays 4-4-2, but 4-2-3-1 is the formation that he does go with. Like I said, a number of occasions it was 4-3-3 a few matches here and there and um what was the other formation that i just said uh 4-4-2 for a few matches as well but predominantly 4-2-3-1 he loves hardworking players so i'll use a i'll use kind of a guy who's on the roster who didn't really score too many goals but he just hustled and hustled and hustled um nemanja milic uh he was at times he was a winger he was a striker when everyone else was injured. And oddly, that Red, Red Bull Salzburg is actually someone that they beat to get to uh, Champions League. And, and Milic was a part of that a part of that match. And the team was very injury riddled and he was playing the wing position. I think Ben was, was a striker, but it was due to his willingness to get back and defend. So if AK Athens has players on their current rosters who are maybe not that great, but they're just hardworking players, Milojevic always has room for guys like that in his roster and in his starting 11. He loves players like that. Uh, something to keep an eye on, uh, Kostic currently plays for AK Athens. He's been linked with Red Star Belgrade. We'll see what happens in the next week or two with that, just because Milojevic is familiar with him. Like I said, he did play for Red Star Belgrade, so they kind of have a history there. Will he stay with AK Athens? Will he leave for Serbia? We'll see about that. But... Just looking at how AK Athens has done in the Greek League the last few seasons, last three seasons they finished third and four years ago they finished first. So there are some high standards 
um, in terms of AK and where they want to finish. I'm sure they're going to be gunning for the top. The only other team that really has been consistent throughout that period, throughout those four years in Greece, is Olympiakos, who does win a majority of the titles as of now. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. And, you know, when he takes over AK Athens, there's going to be some pressure there. Uh, they're going to want to, you know, take it a step ahead and, and challenge Olympiakos for uh, the, the title there. The money situation, I don't know what it's like with AK Athens, like if they have money, if they're willing to, you know, bring in players, but they're also a part of Champions League. So there's a little bit of history there um, as well. I think two years ago they were they were in Champions League. So with him taking over the, the squad, um, I, I like the move for AK Athens. He's one of my favorite Red Star coaches of all time, if not the favorite. I think Prosinecki is probably my favorite. And obviously Dan Stankovic taking over now, a guy who is... You know, came up through uh, Red Stars Youth Academy and had a great career at Inter Milan and and Lazio and stuff like that. So obviously, Stanguich is up there as well. But Milojevic was the pioneer of kind of putting Red Star back on the map. Like I said, um, a berth in Europa League and then Champions League uh, for two seasons. Um, and also, I should mention with Red Star, he Red Star started from the first qualifying round of Europa League and they made it to the Europa League group stage. First team to ever do that from to start from qualifying a first round and to make it uh, to Europa League. And the following year, Red Star started from the first round of qualifying in Champions League and they also made it to the Champions League group stage. First team to ever do that as well. And then they did it again the following year in Champions League. Start from the first round and they made it to Champions League group stage again. So his teams are very disciplined, like I said. Uh, if, if there are hardworking players on this roster, they are going to get a chance. And I remember he was doing a QA and a um, on the Red Star uh, official channel on YouTube. And one of the questions is, uh, how did he, something along the lines of how did he feel about uh, Nemanja Radonic at that time, who was, who, was a, who was a winger for Red Star at the time, you know, partying. I think it was the night before uh, games. And he said that's something that we're going to have to. And he took it very seriously. And he said that's something that they're going to have to, you know, talk about privately. So he is... He's by the book. Um, defensively, his teams are very organized. Uh, one thing I'll say is sometimes he plays a little bit too defensive. Like there was there was derbies against uh, Partizan where he played very, very defensive. Um, and he almost didn't even show a willingness to attack. So once AK Athens plays big teams like Olympiakos and even Panantiakos, uh, Pauk and, and teams like that, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, first of all, the formation that he goes with, which I think is still going to be 4-2-3-1. That's his formation of choice. And how he approaches the match. Is it going to be attacking or is it going to be a lot of sitting back? But in terms of in terms of the uh, the appointment altogether, I really like it for AK Athens. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. Like I said, they've had great results the last four seasons. Three third place finishes and um, a title as well as, as well as a Champions League berth in the group stage. So there is going to be a there is going to be a lot of pressure. He's going to have to win from the moment that he gets there. Uh, the team is probably going to have to spend some money to make the roster better. Like I said, he's familiar with Krstičić, who he had at Red Star. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how that kind of plays in. And if Krstičić does come to Red Star, because that has been the rumor, you know, for about a month now. And it looks like it's coming closer uh, to realization that he is going to come. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out at the end. Um, but yeah, I think overall, uh, a great appointment by AK Athens.